This is a Schwinn Jaguar. Uh, I think it's a girl's bike because normally on the guys' bikes they have this uh, a bar that kind of goes from the frame here to the right around the bottom of the seat and usually you see the engines underneath that bar and the gas tanks then go get mounted on that bar. I've built a bunch of these motorized bikes in the past, never on a girl bike frame like uh, this one has. Uh, I've always done it with the uh, where it has that bar going across so you can mount this tank onto that. But So the challenge here uh, was trying to figure out where to put this tank. Right now, it's sitting on top of the on top of the rack. So that's uh, what's going on with it. And there are tanks that you can get that can be mounted underneath this rack. They kind of they kind of come down in here too. That actually are narrow enough to clear the tire. So anyway. There's nothing hitting the tire on this one, the situation right here. Everything clears and it's good to go. It's just not as streamlined and of course you can't really use the rack. There's just like a little space here. I considered using a cylinder type thing. Maybe uh, they, they sell uh, one gallon kegs that you can do. I just didn't want to manufacture a gas tank for this so I used the tank that came with the kit. Uh, another thing that comes with the kit, uh, besides all the stuff you're looking at, is this pipe, which uh, I did not have. This would not fit onto this bike and still clear the frame properly. It, it was going to hit the uh, bottom tube here of the frame, so the only way to do it was to maybe cut this off and kind of like re-weld it on with the, and turning it this way a little bit, the flange. But this thing is so awful heavy that, uh, you know, it'd have to be a good weld. And see the size of that hole right there uh, compared to the diameter of this pipe here, the hole of this pipe. Uh, this is significantly smaller, so I kind of like this pipe here that I made. It's just, uh, it was a pre-bent galvanized steel, got from a hardware store locally or something, that uh, that works. I did have to uh, customize, custom made a uh, little flange mount here for the exhaust. Uh, I've got a screw with a basically locked nut holding it on on one side and then on this side it's an it's an allen head bolt that is holding it in there i don't have any uh loctite or anything on there so periodically you want to check the tightness of this this is a pretty critical area as far as uh attaching this to the frame somehow to dampen vibrations and all that stuff and bear some of the weight of this i don't think it's really that critical this pipe it, by itself probably weighs about half of what this thing does and this has such a huge arm on it that 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 vibration is really transferring back to where it mounts into the motor i don't think we're having that kind of problem with this this is very much an experimental setup <laughs> but uh i think it's gonna so far it's working out pretty good i've only got about maybe a mile on this bike right now it hasn't been ridden or driven much it hasn't been run much so anyway uh with this open pipe situation besides it being loud it's just it's wide open and two stroke engines this is a two stroke engine by the way you have to mix the fuel before you put it into the tank okay so it's two cycle engine like a chainsaw or a gas trimmer okay so you got to mix the fuel the two cycle engines require a some type of uh, uh, back pressure as this as the exhaust gases are escaping out of here there needs to be some kind of like back pressure and and so this pipe that comes with the kit look at that that's the size of the hole that's allowing gases to escape from this pipe okay so it's pretty darn small 
and then inside of that if you took that screw off right there and took this cap off there are baffles that kind of further restrict the flow of the exhaust gases so as gases come out of this pipe they expand so this is kind of like a muffler slash expansion chamber all right so we don't really have an expansion chamber uh, the pipe here itself is the expansion chamber and the the uh, back pressure amount of back pressure you can control actually by this little valve temperature outside, your elevation, your engine's going to be performing differently depending on the conditions. And so you can get to a point where you're tweaking this to get the right amount of back pressure for your particular environmental conditions, okay? And that's, that's just something to mess with um, should you decide to get this bike. All right, uh, there's a little bit of touch up on paint on here. It's not a brand new bike. Uh, I've had it for about three years now. Mostly it's just sat in the garage. I rode it just a handful of times. My wife actually had me go pick this up. She found it on Facebook or whatever, bought it. She never rode it. So now it's just kind of been sitting around and if bikes sit around in my garage, I end up putting motors on them. So here's what uh, the result is of my efforts doing that. Uh, this is just like the standard kind of swash plate is what I call it, squish plate. And we're, it's not the absolute 100% best setup that can be done on these motorized bikes, but it works. And uh, guys ride these for years uh, with this configuration on here. You just want to every now and then check these nuts and make sure that they're not backing off and getting loose. They are uh, nylock lock, lock, uh, lock nuts on there. Okay, there's nine of them. This little chain guard right here is a little old. It's about the only old looking thing that's on here. I consider changing it out. Um, but I just, I'm just showing you. It's what it is. Okay. And what do we have up here? Um, right now, only have a front brake. I and mean, it works wonderfully. Uh, as you will. If you start riding these things for any length of time, you start understanding uh, how clutch manipulation, engaging, disengaging the clutch can help you speed up or slow down, okay, using uh, engine uh, drag on the engine. So, so with this clutch, like a motorcycle, if you're familiar with a motorcycle, you pull it in and it's free to roll. The bike can roll back and forth and then when you release the clutch mechanism it engages the motor to the bike and now it's tr it's turning the engine okay so that's how you start it that's how you actually start the bike is by getting it pedaling it so you get up to about five ten miles an hour something like that and then releasing that lever there and it engages the motor starts spinning the motor it is uh, going to get going to start igniting the fuel and start right up. Okay, so that's how you do it. They got a little, I got a little bell hooked up here. Anything else here that I wanted to bring up? One other thing. Um, it does have all the gears. All the gears work. Going through the gears, they're much easier to um, go through the gears when you're riding. But you have every one of the gears I guess this is a seven speed but they do work and you'd be surprised I am surprised at the ease of pedaling this thing when you have when you have the handle squeezed it rides like a normal bike you can barely tell that there's an engine and a big fat chain attached to it see on the other side there's the drive chain right there so that drives the uh, sprocket attached to the wheel when you're pedaling now it's this chain that uh, is uh, driven by you pedaling okay so if you got that lever pulled in you're pedaling it rides like a normal bike okay it's just a little heavier uh, and there's a little slight drag uh, versus not having an engine on there at all um, 
but it's surprisingly uh, light action and it's easy to pedal. Oh, the other thing, no rear brake. And, and I'll get to this uh, chain tension in a second, but there's no rear brake. I've rigged this up to where there is a, uh, there's a copper wire that's basically folded through here, bent in half, so this brake linkage isn't going anywhere. You can, it's easy to go ahead and put uh, the brake pads. These are very common brake assemblies where the pads can go on here. Uh, I even have the parts for this, but I just did not want another wire. I didn't want another cable up here. It's, you already got like a kind of a bird's nest of wires. It's not very aesthetically beautiful at all, but um, I didn't want to put another one on there or mess with it. Uh, the engine clutch engage disengage like i said once you start getting used to riding these things you can use this as actual for braking engine braking so you can engage the motor this is the engine the clutch engage okay this is disengage you're disengaging okay from the engine you're disengaging the clutch from the engine so it's free to spin the motor is free to spin and when you engage it is actually directly connected now to the rear wheel so the drag from this motor and the friction going from the street to the tire to the chain is directly on the motor so you have that drag and it's braking action uh, with that clutch out if you're not giving it gas it will die if you're on a straight and level uh, road and you're riding if you release that clutch and you don't give it gas it will stop the engine some guys don't have any brakes on these things or kill switches either and by the way this does have a kill switch right here uh, that kills the engine so anyway that's about the rear brakes that are not installed and this linkage isn't going anywhere these uh, brake arms they're just uh, hanging out there Let's see they're pretty equidistant from the tire there so they're not going to touch anything and then you have like a a nice spring activated uh, chain tensioner so you'll never again have to adjust the chain tension and if it starts loosening up you can actually bring it up another notch to increase spring tension because this chain is brand new it will stretch and uh, that's about it that's all I can think of you have your uh, CDI uh, magneto, well actually coil I guess you could call it. Magneto is something that's underneath here that actually creates the spark. Um, clutch assembly, chain tensioner, got the rear sprocket, gas tank, carburetor, fuel filter and line, spark plug, clutch lever, Bell, kill switch, gear shifter for normal bicycle operation, and then the uh, the throttle grip. Okay, I'm gonna go out and start it out. Uh, what I like to do if it hasn't been running for a while, I know it's kind of weird, but because the fuel line is so long and it kind of goes uphill a little bit before it goes back down to the carburetor, I just like to take this off and I'll blow. I'll actually wipe it off a little bit and I'll blow real lightly into there. And that kind of gives it some head pressure, gets the gas down into the carburetor. And then also this little button right here pushes down the float inside of the carburetor that allows fuel to just freely flow down into there to make sure you have a good level of fuel before you take off. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'll be coming right back here and park it. And I'll show you some adjustments that uh, I'll be making onto the uh, carburetor for the idle speed adjustment. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and take it out. Hopefully get it down the driveway and get it started. Turn it right back around. And I'm going to pull it up into here and try to show you the idle speed adjustment.
I'm going to take and adjust that screw right there. I don't know if it's going to be pointing at it. That'll get the uh, idle speed adjustment a little lower by turning it out counterclockwise.